Everybody sing it now in the first. Sinners, Jesus will receive soundless word of grace to all through the heavenly pathway lead. All who linger, all who fall, sing it o'er and o'er again. Christ receive its sinful men, made the man sits clear and plain. Christ receive. This last demand, sing it o'er and o'er again. Christ receive his sinful man, made the man, sits clear and plain. Christ receive his sinful man, Christ receive his sinful man, even me. With all my sin, first from every spot and stain, heaven within my enter in, sing it o'er and o'er again. Christ receive, fit sinful man, make the message clear and plain. Christ receive, fit sinful Man. All righty, flip over to page number 267. Let's sing all the way, My Savior Leads Me. 267. Good singing, church. Keep it up. 267. On the first, all the way, My Savior leads me. What have I to ask beside? Can I now his sinner mercy, who through life has been my God? Heavenly peace, divine is comfort. Hear my faith in him to dwell. For I know whatever befall me, Jesus doeth all things well. For I know whatever befall me, Jesus doeth all things well. All the way my Savior leads me, cheers its winding path I tread, gives me grace for every trial, feeds me with the living bread. Though my weary steps may falter and my soul a thirst may be, Gushing from the rock of it, for me, low, a spring of joy I see. Gushing from the rock before me, low, a spring of joy I see. All the way my Savior leads me, oh, the fullness of his love. Perfect rest is me to promise in my Father's house above. When my spirit clothes the mortal, wings its flight to realms of day, this my soul through endless ages, Jesus led me all the way. This my soul through endless ages, Jesus led me all the way. All right, you can be seated. Amen. Good morning, church. Hope you've had a good, blessed day. I appreciate your faithfulness. 
uh, to God's house, thankful to be back here in this place, and thankful for the many mercies and wonders of our Savior. Amen. I do want to give you a handful of announcements. We will be postponing our business meeting and building fund to next Sunday, and so uh, please take note of that. Ladies' Bible study is Tuesday at 930 uh, April the 27th, 10 a.m., we're having a church cleaning day, okay? We're going to try to do some spring cleaning together, so please make plans to attend and come out and help. That's always a blessing to get to be a part of, and so I hope that you will uh, get in on that. May the 18th, Saturday, <clears throat> at 11 a.m. to 3 p.m., uh, Grace Baptist Church's ladies is going to have a fellowship. There is a flyer on the back of your bulletin, and um, <clears throat> we hope that you will sign up in the landing area there of the foyer. And if you'd like to participate, please see Miss Noel, uh, Miss Caitlin, or Miss Allie. If you have any questions, they should be able to answer any and all questions or concerns, okay? Um, but uh, please come out and be a part of that. I believe that's going to be a good time in the Lord with our ladies, and I hope that you'll come. It is ages 12 and up. It is ages 12 and up, okay? And then um, nursery, cleaning, and junior church cooking sign-ups are also in the landing area. If you want to help out in any of those, please do, and uh, that'll surely be a blessing. Amen? All right. Well, we also have some birthdays to address. Oh my goodness, I'm trying to check here, it's coming, is it not, or is it done happened, okay, praise the Lord, um, Carla, did you have a birthday, yeah. well stand up darling, what'd you think, I was going to let you sit down, you ain't that old, how old are you, oh my goodness, can y'all believe it, <laughs> Miss Carla, 22 years old, did you have a happy birthday? You did? You had what? <laughs> you had what? A last supper? Well. Lord, yes. Amen, church. That is a good supper, Carla. Well, happy birthday. Give her a hand clap, everybody. Happy birthday, Carla. You're the best. You are the best. And then Sister Haley had a birthday. And uh, you're still young enough, I can ask you, ain't you? She's 30. And so, uh, happy birthday, sis. Let's give her a hand clap as well. Happy birthday. The big 3-0. Amen. <laughs> Amen. I'm sure your husband's been so kind to you. You know, has he? Good. Amen. <laughs> Hey, isn't it good to be saved today, ain't it? And it's good to be uh, uh, get to experience another year of life. And so I don't see my others on the list, but if they roll in, we'll get them. Um, amen. Thank you for being here. It surely is a joy uh, to get to be around God's people in the Lord and get to come back to his church. And I do want to go, Lord, in prayer. Uh, but before I do, I know typically on Sundays we don't do prayer requests, but I've got a pretty big one. Uh, Miss Marlene called me this morning, and they're taking Dawn uh, to UK, I think. They're going to Lexington, I know. And so, uh, essentially, Miss Dawn is having some terrible symptoms with her tongue, her throat, her ears, and they just haven't gotten better. And they're getting worse, severely worse. And they were just uh, told here, you know, they would take a tongue biopsy, and they'd pushed it out a good bit. Well, Miss Dawn is so miserable that they got up this morning, loaded up, and they're headed to Lexington. And Miss Marlene called me and wanted us to pray about that. And so I want to pray for Dawn today. Amen, church. Uh, pretty serious stuff, and she can't get no uh, relief. And they let's pray that they'll figure something out. Maybe it's something real simple, and them doctors have enough sense to diagnose it. Don't you miss the days when doctors just diagnose stuff? Amen. And you got better, so uh, let's pray for, pray for safe traveling, and let's pray for today's service, amen. I hope that you'll remember me when you pray, and pray one for another. We could very well have somebody in our midst that's uh, in need of something from heaven, 
So let's pray that God supply the need. Everybody that's able, let's gather in together around the altar as a, as a church body and family. And let's just take our time and spend some time together worshiping Him and uh, enjoying the corporal prayer of God's people together. Gracious and merciful Father in heaven, we thank you. You've been bountifully good to us, Lord, and I appreciate your grace and your mercy. Appreciate, Lord, all the many wonderful, marvelous blessings you've bestowed upon us here at Grace Baptist Church. God, we thank you. And Lord, I pray that you would be in this place today, Lord. We desperately need you. I pray, Lord, for the liberty of the Holy Spirit to worship you in spirit and truth to give you praise because you're worthy no matter what God you're worthy of praise I pray Lord you be with Miss Marlene touch Miss Dawn today Lord I ask that they'd get Lord resolved and Lord she'd have some relief Lord I pray that they'd figure out what's going on Lord and, and she'd get better be with her God touch, touch Jerry and Lord touch Taylor touch them as they travel and just please God we pray you'd You'd fix the problem here. And Lord, be with all of those, God, that are in our midst today that may be, Lord, needing strength from the Spirit of God. I pray, Lord, that here shortly the songs of Zion that are sung, the Lord, the message from the Scriptures is delivered. And, Lord, I pray that each and every person that's here, Lord, that we would put our mind on you, God, and that we'd lean on you. Lord, that you'd speak to us what you'd have us to hear and what you'd have us to know. Lord, we are an undeserving people today, but you've been bountifully good to us. And we give you praise and glory and honor. Lord, I thank you for loving me in spite of me. And thank you for this church. Lord, I pray you'd watch over us in this time and help us as we try our best to be obedient to you. We love you. Lord, we thank you. It is in Jesus' name I pray. Amen, amen, amen. All right, church, let's have that choir come. We'll sing a while. Pray for them as they come.
Lord, sometimes I feel like a vessel, just useless old pieces of clay. But somehow you saw more something worth dying for. You paid more than you should have paid. And I know that you've seen all my failures. And yet your grace has always remained. And someday in the land before you I will stand, I'll lift my voice and praise your dear name.
is you've been too good to me for me to think of walking away. Been many times in my life where I've tried to get away from him. I've tried to walk away. I've tried to do everything in my, I can in my power to get away from him. But he just kept on bringing me back. He kept pulling me in and kept blessing me and kept taking care of me. Amen. And sometimes it felt like I was trying to, I was, he was doing it while I was kicking and screaming, trying to get away from him. You know, sometimes with my kids, though, I'll holler for them, tell them to come to me. Yesterday we was at the park, and Elsie was swinging and trying to do some jumping, going down the slides and stuff, and she started to get away from me. And I said, Elsie, come here. What she didn't understand was I was trying to keep her from getting run over by a car yesterday. And she went kicking and screaming as I picked her up, and she wanted to run around. She didn't understand there was something coming that was going to hurt her. And sometimes the Lord's trying to protect us from things. And he's taking care of us. And we think we're going to go kicking and screaming, but I'm glad he's good to us. Amen. I'm glad he takes care of us. I'm glad he gave his son to die on the cross. He's been too good for us to think of walking away. Amen. Grab your Bibles with me and turn to the book of Numbers, chapter 20. Numbers, chapter 20. And uh, we're kind of still in that vein of surveying the life of Moses and I do want to do this while we're doing this uh, Tyler if you could we had a gentleman make us this new cross for our baptistry background isn't that beautiful and we thank the Lord for that and we want uh, he didn't charge us a dime wouldn't take money me and brother Zach tried every which way in the world but we do want to tell him thanks so, Brother Tyler, if you could, he's going. To, this card will be passing around while I preach. Don't let it distract you too much, but I do want you to sign that and let the dear brother know what a blessing it is that he did that for us. Okay, Numbers chapter twenty. I do have one more order to take care of. Kason's here. Stand up, young man. Did you have a birthday? Was it a good one? All right. Did you get a birthday whooping? Well, come here, son. It's time. <laughs> Happy birthday. Give him a hand clap. Ain't God good? Amen. Amen. His birthday was the 7th. Happy birthday, buddy. Okay, now we got all the business taken care of. Numbers chapter 20. As I said, I'm still in the vein of a survey, if you will, of the uh, the life and ministry of Moses, really. It's kind of where we've been hung lately. And... Um, and I want to try to be a blessing to you. I want you to look at Numbers chapter 20 and look at verse 1 with me. Verse 1. If you're there, say amen. amen. Then came the children of Israel, even the whole congregation, into the desert of Zin in the first month. And the people abode in Kadesh, and Miriam died there and was buried. So there's the death of Moses' sister Miriam. And there was no water for the congregation. And they gathered themselves together against Moses and against Aaron. And the people chode with Moses and spake, saying, Would God that we had died when our brethren died before the Lord. And why have you brought up the congregation of the Lord into the wilderness, that we and our cattle should die there? And wherefore have ye made us to come up out of Egypt to bring us in unto this evil place. It is no place of seed or figs or of vines or of pomegranates, neither is there any water to drink. And Moses and Aaron went from the presence of the assembly unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, and they fell upon their faces, and the glory of the Lord appeared unto them. So this is somewhat of a familiar example. Amen? This may even, some of y'all may even be reading this and think, man, I feel like he, Brother Caleb just preached on this. Well, that's because the, the children of Israel uh, has done been through this experience. Right. Back in Exodus, you don't turn there, but Exodus chapter 17, people of Israel was in a different place, a desert place. The people of Israel had uh, thirst and went to Moses, throwing a fit about it, and, and uh, Moses went to God, Moses Aaron went to God then, and, and the Lord appeared. And so it's a similar deal, but there is some differences, and we'll see that in the verses to come. And the Lord spake unto Moses, notice what he says to Moses in verse 8, Take the rod, 
Gather thou the assembly together, thou and Aaron thy brother, and speak unto the rock before their eyes, and it shall give forth his water, and thou shalt bring forth to them water out of the rock, thou, so, so thou shalt give the congregation and their beasts drink. And Moses took the rod from before the Lord as he commanded him. Notice verse 10. And Moses and Aaron gathered the congregation together before the rock, and he said unto them, notice what he says, Hear now, ye rebels, must we fetch you water out of this rock? And Moses lifted up his hand, and with his rod, notice, he smote the rock twice. And the water came out abundantly, and the congregation drank, and their beasts also. And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron, because ye believe me not to sanctify me in the eyes of the children of Israel, therefore ye shall not bring this congregation into the land which I have given them. This is the water of Meribah, because the children of Israel strove with the Lord, and he sanctified, and he was sanctified in them. Let's go, Lord, in prayer together. Lord, I thank you for the day. I thank you for your blessings. I thank you for, Lord, your precious Holy Spirit. I thank you, Lord, for the precious people, Lord, here. And I just pray, God, that you'd use this message as you've done time and time again. The preaching of God's Word will not fail. And Lord, I pray you'd bless it again today. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you for your uh, listening and attention during the read uh, the red word of God uh, again a, a familiar a familiar witness a familiar testimony in the people of Israel but with a different spin on things amen uh, the people of Israel here are going through their struggles and their struggles is that they are spoiled <laughs> they are rotten they are uh, cantankerous if you will and I want you to notice here in this passage, first of all, I want you to notice the absurd statements that we find in verses 1 through 5. Again, the people of Israel are thirsty. Uh, they need something to drink. And that is an understandable complaint. Can I get a witness today? Amen. Like, I'm not going to throw shade on somebody for being thirsty. Uh, or or ex let me say this, experiencing thirst. Amen. That's a... That's a good thing to have, amen, so that you know that you are depleted of something that you need. And, and so they were, they were experiencing this thirst uh, that was uh, alarming to them, but instead of uh, responding the right way, what do we find? Well, we find them uh, making, again, some absurd, some absurd statements. I want you to notice, first of all, under this, these absurd statements, I want you to notice how that they were... Uh, quote unquote, if you will, trying to sound tough. Amen. Trying to sound tough. Notice what they said there in verse 3. Would God that we had died when our brethren died before the Lord. That, that is such a strong statement for these people to make. Amen. Essentially what they're saying is they're saying back when Korah, y'all remember when I preached about Korah, that rebel uh, that tried to tried to build an uprising against Moses, Korah, and how that God, or rather Moses and Aaron, went before God humbly, and God stood them up, and He said, I'm going to let you know who's in charge. And the Bible says that the earth swallowed Korah and those rebels. That's who these people here in chapter 20, that's who they are referencing when they say, would to God that we had died with Korah in them. But you know what you find back in chapter 16 when that took place in verse 31, uh, verse 32, the earth opened her mouth, swallowed them up, their houses, all the men that appeared unto Korah and their goods, they all, uh, they and all that appertained to them went down alive into the pit. Notice, and the earth closed them up and they perished from among the congregation and all Israel that was round about them fled and cry of uh, at the cry of them, for they said, lest the earth swallow us up also. Did you see what the Bible said there? Listen to me. When that experience actually took place, and when those people were swallowed up by the earth itself, 
uh, the very people here that want to act tough, the very people here that want to make an absurd statement like, I wish, essentially what they're saying is this, I wish God would have let me die uh, with that bunch of Korah back when God took them and swallowed them up by the earth. And let me just tell you something. It's easy to act tough uh, when the rubber has not yet met the road, friend. Amen? Uh, but when the rubber actually meets the road and our life actually goes through those experiences that are not ideal, uh, it is always, it's always uh, uh, somewhat comical to see how the people that want to act like they're big and they're bad uh, and they're tough begin to panic and run just like everybody else would. Why? Because... What you say with your mouth really doesn't mean a whole lot when it comes to what you actually do. Talk is cheap, amen? Talk is cheap. And God's people need not forget that we are at the Lord's mercy today. It's of the Lord's mercies that we're not consumed. I say amen to that. And also I say we're at His mercy. He can do with us and to us as He pleases. Why? Because He's God. He's in control. And when God has His will and He reveals that to us and He puts us where we are to be in order to bring Him uh, the most glory, but God forbid we act big and tough. Amen. God forbid we say something so absurd as I wish I'd have died back when I went through those hard times or when I was struggling. No, friend. Uh, this is no time in the lives of these Israelites. This is no time to try to sound tough. Not only do we see them sounding tough, we see their scolding treatment of Moses there uh, in verse 5 or rather verse 4. Uh, it says, Why have ye brought up the congregation of the Lord into the wilderness? It's His fault now. Amen. Why have ye done this that we and our cattle should die there? Let me ask you a question. Real simple. Alright, real simple. Was they dead yet? No. That's exactly right. Their, their entire uh, position, their entire treatment, this scolding, this choding, the Bible calls it, of Moses was based off of something that was not true today. Amen. And God forbid that we as His people allow our pessimism, allow our negative, uh, negative hearts, amen, and we're all guilty of it today, are we not? Uh, God forbid we allow that to convince us that something has done happened that ain't happened yet. Amen. And may we, may we trust the Lord instead of scolding others, instead of trying to sound tough, then we see their slanderous threatenings. The Bible says, Wherefore have you made us to come up out of Egypt to bring us in into this evil place? It is no place of seed or figs or vines or pomegranates. Neither is there any water to drink. They have threatened Moses. They have scolded Moses. They have slandered Moses. Then they, and they've done it all while trying to sound tough and sound big and bad and, and make such a foolish statement like, I would rather God would have killed me than for Him to allow me to go through what I'm going through now. Friend, again, may I remind you, when God did do some killing... They were panicking. Why? Because we don't want that, not a bit more than nothing, do we? Say amen if you're with me today. Amen. We want God to have mercy on us. And look here, and we are at the mercy of God today. And He can do as He pleases. He can do as He pleases. We see this absurd statement, uh, these absurd statements there in verses 1 through 5. But then I want you to notice the appropriate seeking. The appropriate seeking, of course, by Moses. What does Moses do? Why, Moses goes to God. And he doesn't go to God and raise a finger of accusation. He doesn't go to God and, and respond like the Israelites did toward God. No, Moses and Aaron, in, in this appropriate seeking, we see their proper position there in verse 6. The Bible says they fell upon their faces. And the glory of the Lord appeared unto them. Can I remind you today that we serve a God that is near the humility of His people. We serve a God that honors the humility of His people. We serve a God that is in the presence of the worshiping of Him by His people. And that's exactly what Moses and Aaron did. 
Look, it would not have been hard for Moses and Aaron. Listen to me now. If they, if they had, let's say they had been leaning upon their own understanding. You know, that's something that the Bible tells us specifically not to do. What if Moses and Aaron had went to God and they said, "You know what? You know what, Lord? Listen now. Uh, they're right. Here we are, and we're your chosen people." You've set us apart, you've sanctified us. And God, here you have, you have brought us into a desert place, God. God, you've allowed us, and, and it, is, it is your will based off of what they did, but nevertheless, God was doing it to them. God, you've allowed us and brought us into a place where we literally do not have something to drink. And you know what? Many, many of God's people today, listen to me now, has allowed the perspective of the world to bring them to the same occurrence between them and the Lord. Listen to me. There's been many a people today point a finger up at God and say, God, why would you allow me to come into this place of suffering? Why would you allow me to come into this place of dryness and thirst? God, why would you allow me to experience the thirst that I am experiencing? Lord, without supplying an obvious need to me, And there's so many, listen to me, that's the perspective of the world. But when you can look at your situation, when you can look at your scenario, your circumstances, uh, with the proper perspective of the Scriptures, friend, you will find blessing after blessing after blessing. Listen, from God uh, allowing His people to go through those seasons of desert places in their lives. Amen. Amen. It's good for us to remember what thirst feels like. Can I get a witness today? I said it's good for us to remember what thirst feels like. What it feels like to stand in need and for God to marvelously and, and, and wonderfully supply the need in spite, in spite of our deserving, in spite of our worth. We see this proper position. We see not only a proper position, but we see a precise preparation. There in verse 8, the Bible said, that God tells Moses to take his rod, take thy rod, the rod rather, and he says, gather thou the assembly together, speak unto the rock before their eyes. These are four distinct, four specific details that God tells Moses, precise preparations, take the rod. The rod, listen to me, That back in Exodus chapter 17 represented what? Judgment. And a rod does represent judgment. Amen. Spare the rod, spoil the child. You ever heard that statement before? Help me now. Don't die on me. Talk to me today, church. Spare the rod, spoil the child. What's that rod represent? Judgment. Spanking that young. And the Bible tells us there's coming a day when Jesus will set up His throne in Jerusalem and He will rule the world with a rod of iron. I say amen to these things. Do you today? Amen. God is in control. God is still the ultimate judge. And back in Exodus, God specifically told Moses, take that rod and smite that rock. The rock being a picture and a type of what, church? Jesus Christ. Jesus is the rock. And He told Moses to stand upon the rock. And that that rock was a representation of Jesus Christ. And that rod was a representation of smiting, in smiting that rock, of what Jesus did for our sins today. Amen. And there in Exodus 17, what happened? That rock was smitten by the rod of judgment because of the sins of the people and the rock supplied water to supply the need of the people, the perfect picture and type of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. How that we, we deserve to be smitten by the rod. We deserve to suffer. We deserve the crucifixion of the cross. But He uh, did it for us and in doing so, the Bible says waters will spring up in those that believe in Him and call upon Him. Amen and that call upon Him. For whosoever shall call, the Bible said, upon the name of the Lord. And so listen to me now. That first instance, what did God say? Smite the rock with the rod. But in that second instance, God didn't say smite the rock. He told him, take take the rod. Why? Because not only does a rod represent judgment, it represents comfort. Psalm 23. 
Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. And in the life of a believer, it's comforting to know who's in control. Amen. I don't know about tomorrow, but I know who holds it. I trust him. And then he said, take the rod, gather the congregation. You know, the first time he didn't say gather the congregation, he said gather the elders because he wanted those in charge to know who was really in charge. God, and who did God choose to be in charge at that moment? Moses, not them. And Moses smote the rock and the water came out. But here, what does God say toward the congregation? He says, speak to the rock. Don't smite the rock. Speak to the rock. We see this precise preparation. We see this provision that was prevented, or excuse me, presented. The Bible says that the Lord promises him, it shall give forth his water. Thou shalt bring forth to them water out of the rock. So shalt thou give the congregation and their beasts to drink. Aren't you thankful for God's provision that he presents in our lives time and time again. Can I remind you that that rock still has an ear that's not too heavy that he cannot hear today. And that rock, that rock endured the smiting of the rod. Jesus endured what he endured. Why? So that we didn't have to smite him anymore. But that he could could be spoken to. We see lastly the aggravated solution. The aggravated solution. Moses is one of the greatest men in your Bible. But you know what you find out? You find out that there's not a single one man that doesn't have a page in their life that they wish wasn't there. And Moses has that page here. And the Bible says that uh, there was an initial obedience There's an aggravated solution here. There was initial obedience. You say, what do you mean? Well, what does he do? He gets the rod and he goes. And what does he do? He he gathers the congregation. So in this initial obedience, we find partial obedience, honestly, because of the important components. Yes, initially he was obedient. He did the first two steps. God said, take the rod, gather the people. But then we see him change and do something different. Can I remind you today that partial obedience is disobedience. Partial obedience is disobedience. Can I remind you today that it's vitally important, listen to me now, that we finish well. Can I tell you today that it's vitally important that you realize that you've got an entire life to live for Him, not just half. You say, well, I've done, I did His will for X amount of time. Now I'm going to do my own thing. But look, I mean, I've got credit built up. (laughs) It don't work that way. Can I get a witness today? Amen. Because partial obedience is disobedience. And Moses was uh, initially obedient, but he failed to recognize some important components. Verse 10 and 11, what does he do? The Bible says Moses Aaron gathered the people, and this is what he says. "Hear, Hear now, ye rebels. Now did God tell Moses to speak to the people, or did God tell Moses to speak to the rock? Rock. You know, it's real dangerous in this life that we live. Listen to me. I need you to look up here. Sometimes if we're not careful, it's real dangerous to go to the people with our voice in times of desert land instead of going to God with our voice. I said sometimes it's vitally important that we not go to people with our voice, but that we go to God with our voice. Why? Because there ain't no telling what we'd say to people. And we can say some ignorant things. Things that cause problems. Things that hurt. What did Moses say? You rebels. <laughs> and you know what every one of us is thinking? He's right. 
<laughs> He's right. Bust them, Moses. Yeah, but here's the problem. It was disobedient to God. These important components. Then we see Moses. Let me make a statement here that I read by Warren Wearsby. Listen to me. I'm about done. He said, we can fail in our strengths as well as our weaknesses. Did you hear what I said? We can fail in our strengths as well as our weaknesses. Like, we, we don't doubt that we fail in areas that we are weak in, but sometimes if we're not careful, we don't realize that our strengths are not infallible. Moses, the Bible tells us in chapter 12 that Moses was the meekest man on the face of the earth. Moses was the meekest person. Listen to me now. Don't die on me. Listen to me. Moses was the meekest. You say, what's that mean? You know what meekness means? Meekness means you have the authority, you have the opportunity, and you have the ability to exhibit strength in retaliation and judgment. But you choose not to do so. Nobody's more meek and meek as the Lord Jesus. Can I get a witness? The Bible said he could have called down 10,000 angels and he could have wiped out the face of the earth. And look, and had the ability and had the opportunity and, 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 and the strength to do so, but he didn't. Here we are, and Moses is the boss. Moses brought the ten plagues to Egypt. Moses, by God's blessing, Moses parted the Red Sea. Moses did. Amen? Now God gave him that ability, but Moses did it. Why? Because Moses had great power, great authority, and great ability that God blessed him with. And here he is, and he's done. He's done being meek. He's done holding back. And he is now going to show them his authority, his ability, his opportunity. And Moses turns, and what does he do? Well, he smites the rock twice. And the reason that this was such a, such a smack in the face of God is because of what Hebrews tells us. Hebrews chapter 9 tells us, For then must he often have suffered since the foundation of the world, but now once... In the end of the world hath he appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. And it is appointed unto man once to die, but after this the judgment. So Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many unto them that look for him. Shall he appear for the second time without sin unto salvation. You see, listen to me. This is a typology uh, experience for Moses. And Moses was supposed to exhibit for the people of Israel that God was going to stand in the gap for them one time and that that would be sufficient so that from then on he didn't have to die, he didn't have to climb back on that cross, but they could go to him and speak to him and confess their sins. And if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive them. Do you see the picture here today? And this was a grand opportunity to exhibit a type of the gospel for the people of Israel. And guess what? Moses wanted to flex his muscles. Moses wanted to be seen. Moses wanted the glory. In a time where it would have been a wonderful testimony for the world to see, wow, what a God for those people of Israel that all they had to do was talk to the rock and God supplied that water. No, instead we see judgment. We see a smacking of that rock with the rod that was supposed to be comfort but is now again pointing back to judgment. So oftentimes, if we're not careful, we leave out the important components that God can use to be a testimony to the world around us. Amen? We see the infinite, or excuse me, the initial obedience, the important components. We see the infinite benevolence in verse 11b, that second part. What happens? 
Moses flexes his muscles. Moses goes to smacking a rock. Moses has something to say. And God still gives them water. Can I just tell you something? God's good. Can I just tell you something today? He just is good. He just is good. Y'all, how many of y'all know my testimony of dealing with infertility? You know, Heather and I, we struggled with that. And, and we, we went five years trying to have babies and never did. And, and I just can't express to you how many times God's used that in my life. But um, I'll never forget. I've told this a million times, but I want you to hear it today. Brother Caleb got mad at God. And Brother Caleb was praying, and Brother Caleb said, God, I just don't know what the use is. And you know, I was preaching about this the other day down in Georgia at at Brother Jesse's. And standing behind that pulpit, I got uh, beside myself because I I, I was trying to wrap my mind around, why did he have somebody text me? Because that's what happened. I got up from that prayer altar, and before I could get in the living room, I got a text message from a dear brother, and he said, Caleb, I love you. I love Heather. I'm praying for you today. It's all going to be okay. God knows what he's doing. And I just got done fussing at him. I just got done making a scene to God. I just got done saying, God, I don't know what the use is anymore. And he still had a man prepared to text me, and say it's going to be okay. Why did he do that? I'll tell you why. Because he's just good like that. Amen. And it shamed the fire out of me. And I did what Moses did. I got on my face. The infinite benevolence. Can I tell you something? He's just good. Now that don't... I'm not saying that so that you... Uh, I'm not saying that so that you go out in this world and mistreat it. I'm saying that so that it humbles us for when we've mistreated it. Because we have. Lastly, we see the imposed forbiddance of Moses. God said, Moses, you can't go in now. Why? Because there is some reaping to our sowing. There is some reaping to our sowing. And can I just tell you something? God don't excuse anger. You say, but, but Brother Cub, you don't, I don't have to understand. But I can testify in my life that God never excuses my anger. But you don't know what they did. I'll just tell you right now, in my life, it's never mattered what they did. God didn't excuse my anger. The people of Israel was dead wrong. Anybody want to argue that? The people of Israel was mocking his man, mocking God, trying to act tough. And Moses got mad about it. And Moses responded the way he responded. And God still said, now because of this, Moses, you don't get to go in. What does Canaan land represent here? Why, it represents the will of God. And how many times have we... changed the course of our lives because of anger? Because of our anger. If I had the title for this message, it would be something like Finishing the Right Way. When Moses was meek, his strength was meekness, what do you find? You find his might. When Moses was to just speak, and you know he was pretty good at that, wasn't he? God told him to go speak to Egypt, and he did. God used that. Moses' strength was just to speak to the rock, speak to God in, in, in type. Moses smote the Lord in type. May God's people today remember something. That no matter what, God knows what He's doing. He is in control. And He does love us. And He is good. And we can trust Him. Let's stand to our feet. Brother Connor, if you could come. Brother Beckham. I'd like to have a time of invitation this morning. I think we've got much to learn, much to glean from the life of Moses today.